Hello and welcome to All My Floss Tube Neighbors. I'm Chris and this is Chris Cross Stitch and today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022 and this is Floss Tube number 38. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Whether it's morning or evening or afternoon where you are, thank you for taking time to spend with me, to visit with me today. I do appreciate it so very much. If you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that you like what you see. This is a channel primarily about cross-stitching, but there's way more to it than just cross-stitching. Sometimes it's a bit like falling down a rabbit hole or going through the looking glass because you, you really never know what you're gonna get here. Um, but I'm so happy that you are here. And if you are a returning viewer, you are my neighbors, you are the people that compose this neighborhood, and I'm so happy to have you visiting with me once again. If you're new, if you're just stumbling across me, I hope you like what you see. I hope you subscribe to the channel. I hope you ring that bell and like the video so that you can come back and have more fun with us here. We do have a fun time here at Criss Cross Stitch. I'm very proud to say that. I do believe I have the best viewers on Floss Tube, regardless of what the other ones say. And I am just thrilled to have you here visiting with me today. First of all, let's just talk about this hashtag Chris it up phenomenon. I'm still overwhelmed by it. It's still a little bit weird for me to talk about it. Um, it is truly something that is, it's bigger than me now. It's not, it's, I feel, the reason I feel weird about it is because I, you know, I, it's a little bit, well, you know, I don't know how to put it into words. You see me, you, you see the wheels turning. I'm humbled by it. I'm proud of it. I'm excited by it. I'm eternally grateful to my dear friend, uh, Darcy Cameron at Stitchman Darcy for putting this out into the world. And, and I'm grateful to the other people who are picking it up as a way by which uh, we can remind ourselves to find that little spark of joy in, in, in very difficult days. In, you know, we're living through a little bit of a rough time right now. And when you need to criss it up, it's just about you remembering to find that spark of joy that will get you through this next moment or the next hour or the next day. Because there is a joy in all of our lives if we search for it. If we, if, we, if we look for it and can find it. And I'm just eternally grateful for Darcy for starting it. My dear viewer and neighbor, Trudy, I showed this last week, uh, amazing little chart showing Chris it up, Chris it up and, and our dear friend, Sal. Um, and then this week I'm watching Darcy's video and look what he did. <laughs> he did it too. I think this is great. I'm just, I, 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 I will never know how to hold this, but um, I'm certainly glad that it's out in the world. And I'm certainly glad that, I'm certainly glad that it's helping people, you know, or reminding people to, to find the happiness. I don't know that I necessarily have a, a mantra for this channel, but if there is one, um, it would be that what you put forth into the world is what you receive. And I think that that's a, I think that's a great thing. So thank you, Darcy, for taking the time to stitch that. Thank you for having the brain to come up with it. And thank all of you who are posting that hashtag around and spreading that message of joy. I just think it's a great thing. So thank you all. And enough about that. I feel, I still feel so weird about it, but thank you. Good weird, not bad weird. You know, good, good weird. Each week we start the video by naming Handstanding Cat. Handstanding Cat is the top of Tiki Tree of a Thousand Faces, a piece of teak driftwood that is decor in my home. A friend of mine said that the top of it looked like a handstanding cat and I asked you for names for it. And I got so many, I put them on a wheel and we spin every week to decide. This week, Handstanding Cat is named Cyril. Cyril. And that comes from the deer shell of Shillelagh Stitches, a floss tube channel here on YouTube, in the under 1,000 subs club. Shell's is fabulous, uh, does beautiful stitching. She is from the UK. 
And uh, Cyril is a wonderful name. I, I have two go-to names whenever I think of an English gentleman or, or a gentleman from the UK. Um, one is Cyril and the other is Nigel. So this is, this is particularly cute to me. Handstand and Cat this week is named Cyril. Cyril, oh Cyril, may I have a crumpet? Oh Cyril, do, do pass the tea, darling. Yes, Cyril. Thank you, Shell. And check out Shillelagh Stitches here on Floss Tube. One of the things I love about my interaction with all of you is that there is no challenge that you will not rise to meet and succeed in with flying colors. I had offhandedly mentioned when I first introduced this beautiful crocheted uh, likeness of me done by Jody at Jody's Creative Corner um, that it would be very odd for someone to crochet one out of licorice strips or, or candy like red vines, but not red vines, the, the, just the single more spaghetti-like candy. And uh, last week, as you know, I received a lot of pictures of people knitting noodles, but none of the actual candy that I had in this crazy brain. Well, my viewers, Rebecca and Amy, rose to the occasion and look at this gloriful, glory, wonderful, <laughs> glorious photo they sent me. I knew it. I knew it existed. I knew it existed. Um, now, I think it would be very difficult to make a doll out of that, uh, but I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. So... And as I say this, and I think about eating a, a doll made out of that, I think of those cakes. Have you seen those cakes online? You know, these, these incredibly sculpted and decorated cakes are all the rage now ever since that, um, ever since the shows, you know, Cake Boss and things like that have, have, have become popular. And sometimes, you know, you see them and they're just, I could never, you know, hack into a puppy dog cake. I just couldn't do that. So... I, I don't know that I would eat a crochet doll of myself. I think that would be very odd, but I'm tickled to know that people can actually knit and crochet with it. <laughs> it, makes it, very, it makes it very interesting. This is incredibly tangential and we're gonna stop right now. This week was a difficult week for stitching. It was a busy week for me on a lot of personal levels with things going on here at the house. I'm still having a little bit of com computer trouble and there were just a handful of things that didn't enable me to stitch as much as I wanted to, to. But when I did stitch, I was monogamous on this week on a project. I really wanted to finish and did finish my monthly section of Caterpillar Cross Stitches, How Does Your Garden Grow? Mystery Sal. This is being sponsored by Caterpillar Cross Stitch from the UK. They are a wonderful company, it does great. They do have beautiful, cute designs. I, many of you are familiar with them. This was a, is a mystery stitch along that's running until the, the middle of the summer. The first of the patterns, uh, the first section of the pattern was released on January 21st, and I have until February 21st to finish this, but I wanted to finish it. I wanted to just tick that little box off, and there was a little bit more stitching in this than I thought. Uh, it's just adorable. I can't wait to see the next, um, the next section, which will come out on the 21st of this month, if I'm not mistaken. This is Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Their kits are great because everything is right there for you. They provide you the DMC numbers, unlike other uh, kits, unlike some other kits, so that if, if I were to run out of one of these flosses, I could easily replace it because they provide the DMC uh, number for what they have supplied you with. And I love dimension kits, but I have to say the way they send the floss is so much I like better because it's already on kind of a mega bobbin and you could, anyway, I couldn't recommend them more highly. If you still want to stitch this or begin it, um, I'm, I always 
put the information below and I'll have it below. And certainly when the stitch along is done, this will be a chart that's available, I'm more than certain. But it's great. This is what I stitched on this week. I completed it. Now I can move on with good conscience to my two WIPCO projects and my uh, monthly stitching of the Fruits of Plenty Sal that I am sponsoring with my friend Kathy at the Floss Tube Channel to Die House. And I can begin the Modern Folk Embroidery 2022 stitch along that I'm already behind on, but I am going to do, but I couldn't start. You wonder when I'm gonna pause. I can talk on one breath for a long time, can I? <laughs> too much coffee, it's too much coffee. That's what it is. The reason I didn't begin my Modern Folk Embroidery stitch as I had promised is because I needed a, a different size scroll rod set for my frame. That one is going to have a dedicated frame and I needed the sc scroll rods for it. They have arrived. It will be started. I will move forward with it. Hopefully this week I'll have more time to stitch. No, when I first started this channel, I hesitated to, to do a video if I only had one thing to show. But now I'm beyond that. I This weekly visit with you is a good one for everyone involved, I hope. And it certainly is good for me. So I wanted to, to do a video anyway. And uh, today I am going to do a little bit longer of a story that I've been saving for just this occasion. For an, on a day where I have very little stitchy content, I wanted to be able to, to have a, a goodly amount of time to tell this story because it is a humdinger, let me tell you. But that is my stitching of the week. Caterpillar cross stitch, how does your garden grow? I, it's a page finish. It is a monthly uh, segment finish, and I'm very pleased with it. So I didn't blow my hair out today. I, 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 I didn't want to. I'm so sorry. I hope I, turn, I don't turn anyone to stone because I do look like Medusa today. My hair has a natural curl to it and you don't ever see it until it gets longer. And basically, it's not a great curl that'll make your hair just beautiful and curly. It's a curl that makes it look like you've just stuck your finger into a light socket. So just, I'm hoping these beautiful flowers behind me will distract you from the mess of uh, stuff on my head that is my hair. It's time for story time with Chris. And as I alluded to a little bit earlier, this story is, we would normally today be doing a Chris's toy chest segment. And, but instead of that, I decided to tell this particular story because it's a little bit longer and I wanted to have more time. So on a day when there's a lighter, when less stitching to discuss, it was a perfect day to tell this particular story. When I was 15 years old, I had my learner's permit, right? When you turn 15 in Alabama, at least when I was an adolescent, that's what we did. We got our learner's permit when we, the moment we turned 15 and the day we turned 16 is when we went to get our driver's license. And most of us got it. Because, you know, I don't know what you grow up in rural, in, in, in rural Alabama, you're driving before you can legally drive. And so, I had my learner's permit and my best friend, Michael, was a year older than me. So he already had his driver's license. So it was wonderful because we could, basically either one of us could do anything, go anywhere with the other. And I was not, this was early in my driving experience. I was not very, um, I was not very skilled. And one afternoon, as we were, we had decided that we were going to, you know, after school, we were going to just ride around and, and just to be in the car and listen to music and ride around. There was nothing to do. So we spent a lot of time in the car listening to music and talking and just driving and whatever. It's just what we did. And this particular day, I was going to drive. My mother had a, a taupey colored Buick 
four door, smaller Ford. It wasn't, it was a sedan, but it wasn't a big long one. It was, you know, just a, a mid-sized car. Nice car, liked that, I loved that car. And she, at the time, was working uh, as a secretary, a legal secretary in town. And uh, I asked her, you know, can Michael and I ride around tonight and can, this afternoon and can, we t can I take the car? And she was like, sure, just, you know, be careful. It was relatively safe to do that in my hometown. There were only th three traffic lights. One of them blinked. It wasn't that, you know, it's not like a six lane highway. So we got in the car, it was in the autumn, you know, kind of gray sky, getting toward, it wasn't bright sunlight, wasn't dark. And we were just, we were just riding around, Michael and I, listening to, you know, the Eurythmics or whatever, Cindy Lauper, whatever was on the radio in the eighties. And we were going up by my Aunt Ola's house on Wolf Road. And Wolf Road was a paved road. But on the sides of Wolf Road, there weren't many homes. And the road was raised. So the edges of the road were, were kind of ditches. Now, they weren't super deep, but they were definitely deeper than the level of the road. And do you know what a bush hog is? Have you ever heard this term? Let me teach you this term. A bush hog is a mechanical device that attaches to a tractor that is basically a giant lawnmower. And it's used to, to clear underbrush that is bigger than grass, more dense than grass, but, you know, not trees. It can't, like, you have to be able to run over these smaller bushes or whatever. It's a big metal cutting thing. So the city had gone down that street and bushed hog the sides of the road where the shrubbery had grown up into and filled the ditches and smoothed it out so that it looked like grass and brush on the side of the road. Do you know where I'm going with this? So Michael and I are driving along. Everything's going fine. You know, wham is in the background. We're singing, wake me up before you go-go. We have on, you know, the penny loafers with the penny in them and the, the, the pegged jeans and our little eyes odd sweaters with the collars and the feathered hair. We were preppy. Mind in our own business. And of course, I'm driving like a little old lady. I'm not going fast because well, there's no reason to go fast. And, you know, I'm not <laughs> that skilled yet. So we're driving along, minding our own business. And all of a sudden, Michael, who is sitting next to me, goes, what, Chris, what, you, what, 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 stop. And that's about all he could get out. Because at that moment, the car stopped. That was very loud. The car stopped. I didn't, and I, and it scared me to death. And after the initial shock of the stop, we realized that there was nothing that, to hit. I hadn't hit anything. I had not seen a hole in the road at all. But we noticed that the passenger side of the car in the front was lower than the rest of the car. What had happened is that there was a outcropping, a hole in the road that the brush had grown up into and the city 
had mown over, thus making it look like it was flat. It was indiscernible from the road or looked just like, it looked just like the side of the road. So there I am, very, being very cautious about minding the edge. And in doing so, should have gone around it, but I didn't even notice it. So the front of, so, so, I, I, and we didn't know this until we got out of the car. So Michael opens his door and he goes to step out. Well, first of all, <laughs> he slid, bless his heart. It, they were leather seats. It was a leather bucket seat. And, you know, it, when, when, <laughs> when, his, when his side of the car stopped, bless him, he just, he just went right. He didn't hurt himself. He just kind of slid off and into the hair went everywhere because he had long hair then. And, and, and when he pulled himself together, he opens the door to step out of the car. This is how much it looked like the side of the road. He goes to step out. He fell down. Like, like he stepped out of the car and it was like one of those movie scenes where all of a sudden they just go. And then I saw his head come up and he's like, you know, the car's in a hole. <laughs> so I immediately just, I, listen, I'm an anxious person now. You can imagine when I was like at 15 with my mother's car, you know, Mr. Goody Two Shoes always follow the rules. I got out of the car almost immediately, started hyperventilating, and ran around, and sure enough, all four tires were on the road except the one passenger tire, and it was down in the it was down in the hole. It, you know, plus it looked like a, you know a cow that had that was get, one hoof was stuck in you know something. So I did what any other you know, red-blooded American 15-year-old who weighed all of 95 pounds would do. I tried to pick the car up out of the hole. I went over there and I, 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 I you know, I, I reached down with both of my arms and tried to pick the car up out of the hole. I was not successful in my endeavor, let me tell you. And, and Michael, who had now extracted himself from the shrubbery was, <laughs> was, was greatly amused by my attempt to pick the car up out of the hole. Well, he's like, you know, you're silly, get in the car and try to back up. Well, there's, I don't know if you've ever had one of your tires in a hole when the rest aren't and you're not in a four wheel drive, it just won't happen. So of course the car, the, the tire is just spinning, spinning, spinning. Well, when, 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 when that realization dawned upon me, I, 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 I became hysterical. I, <laughs> I immediately turned on my heel and in my penny loafers, I began sprinting. <laughs> she just left the car, left the key, no one's gonna steal it, left Michael, he's like, wait, wait, where are you going? I, I just took off running to my mother's office. And, you know, it's like run, Forrest, run. I, and I did. I, 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 I got there. It wasn't that far away. But I got to my mother's office. And Michael, the only, re the only recourse he had was to take in running after me. So he started <laughs> following me. And mother was standing in the door of the office. Nothing was happening. And she was just looking outside, you know, taking in the foliage. And she saw me running up. At this point, tears streaming down my face. And I saw her all she, through the window. I remember very vividly, her eyes got really big. And the first words out of her mouth were, like, where's my car? <laughs> Not, are you okay? But where is my car? So I burst into the office and I was trying to explain to her what, what had happened. And I was just, there was no way I could. And Michael came in and he explained to her what had occurred. Well, she was none too pleased. But just at that moment, just at that moment, a couple of clients walked into the law office. 
And mother, being the receptionist secretary, it was a very small private practice, one attorney. It was just, it was just his little place. Mother had to disengage from, you know, me sobbing over the filing cabinet and, and went to talk to them. And these were not savory characters. They were, they were from our town, bless them. And they, but they lived a little bit on the outskirts and they were just, they were rougher men and uh, not to disparage them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. They were just, you know, they were just a little uh, rougher and, and asked what was going on with me, you know, heaving, weeping, you know, penny loafer wearing young man sobbing over a filing cabinet. And she explained the situation to them. And they were like, well, we've got a winch in the back of the truck. If the boys want to hop on the back and ride up there to that car with us, I'll pull that car out of that hole. And it's remarkable what the prospect of riding on the back of their truck did to me. <laughs> because in less than a second, I went from you know, Malin in the, in the, in the, in the graveyard boohooing over Shelby to absolutely the picture of clarity and decorum. No, that's absolutely fine. We'll find another way to take care of this. I am sure we can just go down to the service station. I mean, I, it was, it was remarkable what the thought of doing that did to me. Well, mother was having none of it. She was having none of it. She was like, well, if you can, and she did it partially, I think, to teach me lessons. She's like, well, if you can do that, the boys will be more than happy to ride with you back to the car. And, you know, just let me know how it goes. She, he's, he's like, yeah, don't worry about it one bit. We'll be able to pull that car out. We, it's fine. We got a big old truck. And they did have a big old truck. So we went out to the parking lot where their truck was, and it was a big pickup truck, but there was no room for the two of us in the cab. So Michael and I rode on the back of that truck with the tailgate down through town, <laughs> through town. And they, and they, they did exactly what they said they were going to do. They hooked the winch up to the car. They pulled the car out of the hole. Michael and I hid in the bushes just in case anyone drove by to see. And uh, they got the car out of the hole. And I, we got in the car and I drove home. And, <laughs> you know, I was so flabbergasted. I think I had to lay down for a while. But um, it taught me a lesson. <laughs> you know, it taught me a lesson like many things do. Helpfulness comes in all kinds of packages. And sometimes the people that you think are the, the most uh, rough and the most unlike you, and they were unlike you, unlike me, they were unlike me, but they, can, they helped me. And, and, and it, was, it was much appreciated and much um, needed despite my initial reaction to who they were. So I think that's a little nugget that I took with me for the rest of my life too, is that, you know, don't ever look graciousness uh, with, upon graciousness with disdain, regardless of how um, rough and tumble the person may be offering it to you. They were, uh, I, I didn't have any interaction with those two men for the rest of my life. And they were unsavory characters, let me tell you. But in that moment, they, they helped me and I do, did and do appreciate it. And I guess if I would tell you to take anything away from this is when you're riding on the road in rural Alabama, stay close to the center of the lanes.
I have three giveaway winners from last time. Last time we offered three different charts, all very beautiful. The first was this one that I'm showing right now, a beautiful sampler involving bees and floral, floral and bees and uh, a lovely garden sampler. The key word for this was bee, and the winner is Sally Deem. And I hope I'm pronounce, pronouncing that correctly, Sally. Sally, congratulations. You are the winner of this particular bee-themed chart. The second was a big, this is a big chart now. This, uh, this wonderful quilt sampler uh, features many different quilt motifs. It has an alphabet, it has birds. It's, it's really quite stunning and lovely. The winner of this, Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N, and R-N is, the R and the N are both capitalized in this name, so I'm assuming that Lauren is a nurse. Brava to you, Lauren. Thank you for everything you do as a nurse, and congratulations, you are the winner of this particular chart, this massive chart. And lastly, this beautiful vintage chart, and yes, unfortunately, something from the 90s, early 90s is vintage now, uh, The Bride, a lovely depiction of a bride from the 20s or thir early 30s. The winner of this, Stitch and Hammer. Stitch and Hammer, congratulations. If the three of you would please find the email below, crisscrossstitch at gmail.com, and send me your mailing addresses and full names, if you don't mind. I will get those out when next my giveaways go out. And congratulations to all of you for, for, for winning. Yay. This week, we're going to do five more little kit giveaways. I love doing this. I have a lot of these from, from D stashes that you have so graciously sent me over the course of the past few months. And we're still doing really well. I have a good reservoir of, of giveaway items to be able to provide to you. So today I'm gonna to do five. Um, the first is a lovely kit featuring, it comes with the hoop, it comes with all the materials, this home sweet home kit. And this is, this is a great, simple, easy stitch. I'm sure many of you would like to, to stitch that. Please use the keyword home, H-O-M-E, home, if you would like to be considered for this. The next giveaway is a bundle of mini kits. These are very small. Uh, these are almost ornaments, but there are three of them included, which you're looking at right now. Very cute. Again, quick stitches. These would be good. These would also be good presents to teach a granddaughter or grandson or uh, someone like anyone, anyone actually to cross stitch. Three mini kit. The key word for this is going to be mini. Mini. M I N I. The next kit is a beautiful Madeline Floyd design of a bird. It looks like it's probably not a chickadee, but I love this. This bird is great. And this is a card. This is actually a card. You don't have to do it as a card, but this is a kit. Comes with all the fabric and the floss and what have you. Keyword for this is going to be bird, B-I-R-D, bird. Fourth, we have this, I, this is just the cutest thing ever. These little hugging teddy bears. Because some of you are still deep in the throes of winter, I wanted to throw this in today. The key word for this is going to be bears, but aren't they cute? Bears, B-E-A-R-S. And then finally, this is the third of these kits that I had, and I'm going to go ahead and give it away, give this one, uh, put this in the giveaways too. This is a wonderful Mill Hill kit of a Jim Shore design, and this is a, another kitty cat named Petunia. Petunia, and this uh, keyword for this is Petunia. My grandmother grew Petunias on the front porch. It was my job to water them every night. Petunia. So those are the giveaways for this week. Please, as always, follow the giveaway rules. Be over the age of 18 so that I can ask you for your address. Please be a subscriber to the channel. Please like the video and uh, don't use any 
words that might alert someone who lurks, who just wants free items. Don't use any words like that in your comment, like giveaway or winning or prize, etc. So there those are, and we will draw for those this time next week. Thank you for joining me this week. I promise you that next week I will have more stitching and varied stitching to show you. I didn't want to let a week go by without checking in with you, though, and saying hello. I didn't want to let a week go by without showing off these beautiful flowers. Aren't those gorgeous? We had a birthday in the house this week. Not mine, but we had a birthday. And uh, I, I always look forward to our weekly check-ins with each other, with all my neighbors. So I hope that you are well. I hope that it, you are beginning to recover from any sort of inclement weather that you may have had. If you attended a stitch retreat this weekend, I hope you had a good time and you got there safely and returned home safely. If you weren't able to go, I'm sorry about that, but, but I hope that there will be more stitchy retreats in your future, and I want to attend some of these. At some point when all this stuff dies down and I can emerge from my, from my hermit cave, up here on the hill, uh, I will do so. And I can't wait to meet many of you in person when that day comes, and it will come. It will come, I know it will. But in the meantime, have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me as always. And in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.